about to be rocked by the funky, sexy lady Pearl. Coming to you strong in the UK. Singing, my brothers. It all licking my lips and whipping my cream Waiting, anticipating a man who loves a child in me Yo, with mom being a sex fiend Living on the edge is what excites me Yeah, I'm a crazy bitch, a Czechoslovakian kamikaze The thrill of playing with fire, I love it So come on, get rid of that conditioning and all that bullshit Nobody has the right to judge a little me crazy Cause I was born to run from the rules of society Speaking the truth, I know it gets me in trouble But I just gotta bust somebody's bubble So what if my mouth is foul? I say it hot, see it I'm not a calculator, manipulator like a hypocrite You're looking at a real crazy woman And nothing's gonna stop me from getting what I want So you say I'm crazy That's the way I want to be Boy, you never ever change me Cause that's the way I wanna be Why can't you love me for who I am, G? I'm not changing, so try and understand me Stop yapping in my e how I'm supposed to Because nobody, and nobody has the right to judge me So go ahead, hold a mirror to your face Yeah, tie your own fucking shoelace Before you trip and slip, you better straighten up and quit Tell me what to wear when your own clothes don't fit Who are you to be doing all that damn preaching? I'm not listening cause you don't practice what you're teaching So I'm crazy cause I don't sell out like your puppets I only get down on my knees to the Lord, my prophet My heart is full of precious, nothing's gonna grow my dreams I'm a survivor without everybody living disease I wasn't born in no ivory tower What you see is what you get, a wild and crazy love Taking life serious makes us delirious I got nothing to lose, so I live life fearless Young and free, taking advantage of time G, dancing to my groove, proud of being crazy So you say I'm Staff will be addressed by position, title, and last name. Example, Officer Jones. Two, no inmates allowed behind, on, or in part officer's desk. Three, day one, downs will be down with your vehicle and return into the pod, or any other time the staff deems appropriate. Four, you must be fully dressed when out of your room. Five, you are not permitted to open the door of any living area other than your own or enter the living area by the residence. Six, shirts, shoes, and pants will be worn at all times. Seven, permanent off-limit areas are A, the offices will be in the center staff area. C, any door Oh, <laughs> <laughs> 
You got a fucking problem, Collins? I don't like anyone interfering with my recreation time. Yeah, me neither. What's this faggot to you? Oh! Nothing. <laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you all for coming. Uh, I get tired of the sound of my own voice rather quickly, so my lectures, these informal gatherings, tend to be more my answering any questions that you may have. Dr. Patterson, in Eve's Daughter you wrote, and I quote you, sex in the beginning was the primal power. Women were helpless before the dark mythical serpent, unquote. You ladies were just moths to the flame, so to speak? So to speak. You also wrote, and I quote you, throughout recorded history, women fought courageously and have finally extricated themselves from the accepted tyranny of victimization, unquote. If I may paraphrase you, you seem to say that women, for the most part, at least in this country, have accomplished free will and with that ability can confront the evil serpent and the hot flame. Actually, I carried it a step further. We don't deal with the fear of the flame, but rather with the flame itself, or the reptiles themselves, as it were. Do we have any other questions? <laughs> Good night, Professor Patterson. Um, yeah. Could I? Could you? Oh. Could you mind? I'd be delighted. Can I share something with you? If you like. Your book changed my life. For the better, I hope. It takes three What's years to write a book and five minutes to destroy it. <laughs> yeah, I thought he was hard on you. But you handled yourself real well. You don't think I was just a little bit too strong? If professors around here have tender egos. <gasps> We've got professors. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you known? James? No. Kate? About my promotion? Not long. When do I actually take over? When do I start? This coming semester. Oh, I'm so excited. I just can't wait. Sweetie, there is one thing that you should know. Prison. Prison? Yes. Prison. What about it? The chairman of the board of trustees has a pet project. It's prison reform. He wants you to inaugurate the literary program. It's only six and a half weeks. It'll soon be over. Six weeks with rapists and, and murderers? No, I can't. It isn't dangerous to have an armed guard at all times. Kate, I can't do it. Yes, you can. Think of the challenge. Think of what you're doing. You are the youngest dean ever in one of the finest colleges in America. Of course you can do it. You can. Good morning, Professor Patterson. You're looking great. Well, do you think I'll have a chance to invite you out to dinner sometime this week? Professor Evans. James. James, I find you very interesting. But my life, my schedule, my thoughts are rather crowded at the moment. I'm a very persistent man. Yes, you are. Charmingly so. So I will gently persist. <laughs> Dr. Patterson? Yeah. Hi, I'm Jessica Reed. I've been assigned to be your new secretary. So soon? I haven't been invested yet. Well, that's only a matter of days. Why don't I show you your office? Great. It's wonderful.
Professor Patterson, I presume? Unfortunately, your university president and our state senator are old school chums. Pain in the ass intellectuals. Think they're gonna make solid citizens of these bastards in this place by lecturing them. What's your expertise? Literature. I teach literature. Literature. Jesus. Half the cons here never got through a C-spot run. Send in McBride. Look, Warden, I didn't ask for this. I got promoted to a job I wanted very much. And this assignment came with it. You're here. We'll make the most of it. This is McBride. He'll take you to your students. One piece of advice, though. Don't believe anything these cons tell you. Don't get involved in their personal life. Keep your distance. That's three. What? Three pieces of advice. She can count. My name is Professor Elaine Patterson, and I'm here to teach you what I can about English literature. But before I can do that, I'd like to know something about all of you. I'm, I'm Hector Ramirez. I'm a thief. I steal cars and corazones de las mujeres, hearts of women. Thank you, Mr. Ramirez. I'm an embezzler. Want to buy some bonds? I'm not. I found your book in the library. I have to meet you. It's wonderful. I'm polycentelli. You read one of my novels? No. I look at your photograph. Like the poets always say, a picture is worth a thousand words. You. What is your story? Uh, I'm Rayette Wilkes. Well, why are you here, Ray? <laughs> I, I just love languages. <laughs> really? Why? Such is love's transgressions. Griefs of my own lies heavy on my breast. Love is like, like smoke, made with fumes of sighs, purged fire sparkling from a lover's eyes. It's fixed, a sea nourished with lover's tears. <laughs> Thank you. I'm encouraged. You. Can you speak? Mm hmm? Mm hmm? Good. Why don't you uh, grace us with the sound of your voice then? Joe. Joe what? Joe Dial. Go on. Where? Why are you here? I don't know. Assaulted battery, with intent to kill. And you'd be? Collins. Harker Collins. Enlighten me. I got syphilis. Cut the crap, Collins. My wife gave it to me. So, I strangled the bitch. You know what? You remind me of my wife. He likes hurting people. You know, we've all done it, hurt people, but he likes it. Isn't that right, Collins? He's not here to improve his reading skills, either. Oh, why is he here? Probably wants to beat up on Rayette some more. 
Before I die, I'm going to hurt any faggot I can get my hands on. Or any faggot lover bastard who tries to stop me. Well, I think for our first assignment, we'll, um, we'll do Dickens. I'd like you all to go to the prison library and get one of Dickens' novels. If you can't find any, Mark Twain will do. I'm sure you all know Mark Twain. Um, please write a report and give it to me on Friday when we next meet. A whole book? Unless you'd rather go back to the laundry. Also, see if you can find anything similar to the way that you think or feel. Something that you wouldn't ordinarily talk about. Maybe something that you're not proud of, something you're ashamed of, or even frightened of. Can you do that, Mr. Dial? Can you? Class dismissed. <laughs> It went as well as could be expected today. Almost as well, not quite as well. Actually, I nearly lost control. The men were quite volatile. They live in an utterly alienated world. They didn't care that I'm an author or was there to teach them. One was especially, how shall I say it, vexing. Yes, Joe Dial was vexing. There's some very great mythical force at work. It persuaded me to take a house here, and now it leads me to discover that we are neighbors. I suspect someone quite unmythical told you where I live. <laughs> Who would have told me? Oh, probably uh, Kate Miller. Oh, this is a very clever neighbor that we have here. All right, if I agree to plead guilty to the small deceit, will you invite us both in for coffee? Are you pleading guilty? Yes. No. No, I'm not pleading? No. I'm not inviting you in for coffee. Good night, Professor. She will change her mind. In your book report, you wrote, I'm like the artful dodger. So I understand the book pretty good, except for about half the words which are Greek to me. Could you explain that to me? I don't understand Greek words. No. I meant, why do you think that you're like the artful dodger? Well, he's an hombre who arranges things and gets away the most of the time. Like me and my demolition derby. You know what that is? Kind of like a race with cars crashing? For my new girlfriend, I, I arranged one, which is why I'm here. I didn't pay for the cars, I demolished. You mean you stole them? You could say that. She just did, you schmuck. <laughs> <laughs> you missed class today, Mr. Dial. My lawyer was here legal stuff. Did my homework. Good. Well, did it mean anything to you? Matter of fact, it did. Huck in the river, I could relate to that. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the black boy in the book, Jim, perhaps he was red. I didn't think of that. It was just Huck in the river. But you see, Huck, he gets ashore. I mean, I try, but I just keep floating down that river. What about the father? What about him? He was a drunk. He was abusive. 
I lied to you the other day. That book? I don't know why I took your class. Polly showed me that book. Your picture on the back. I wanted to see you. I wanted to touch you. I could see your pain. <laughs> We're all in pain, Mr. Dyer. I mean, we can just take more of the men, that's all. Is that so? Take it back. Oh, what are you doing? Take it back. Take what back? What you said. What? About pain and you and I. I never said you and I. Yes, you did. You may not know it yet, but you did. All right, I take it back. Hey. Give it to me. Read this when you get home. Sweetie, it's me. I'm at the racquetball club. There's a court available in 40 minutes. <laughs> I've had a tough day. I could do with a bit of a smash and a curse to mellow me out. How about you? Are you in the mood? Or are we still in the middle of it? What's going on, sweetie? Joe Dial. A student of mine at the prison gave me this letter. Dear Elaine, I need to be with you, alone in a room. I want to walk into this room and find you. You will be lying naked on the bed. I will not be able to speak to you because I don't know how. Because all these thoughts, I know, are already in your mind. As I walk to the bed, you will not smile at me, but only open your legs slightly. I will take off my clothes slowly and fold them Your eyes chair. would whisper, hurry, hurry. They'd also whisper, I understand, Dal, you needn't explain yourself. The river you can't escape from, the whimpering of all the victims of this world. We will not be victims, you and I. Dial, we will survive. Then I lay myself between your legs. I will enter you. As we climax, you will look at the rose on my arm and see each of the petals bleeding. And you will know in my own way that I love you. Son of a bitch. with your first efforts, most of you follow directions. You read a book, you try to interpret the author's meaning. Most of you. So, everyone gets a passing grade. 
Well, nearly everyone. Mr. Dial, were you ever to come into my bedroom, you would not need to fold your clothes neatly. Excessive neatness is a sign of a disturbed mind. I would, however, expect you to speak the words necessary to seduce, as you put it, a woman such as myself. The fact that I can speak the words is not enough. You would have to speak them to me. And since you will not, the scenario you so graphically described will never take place. You didn't understand this author's instinct at all. So no passing grade, Mr. Dial, your message is ignored. I'm sorry I didn't mean to startle you. Oh, I'm a little scattered today. Crowded schedule? Uh, crowded mind. <laughs> what do they bring to mind for you? Nothing in particular. But you seem so intent. Did I? No, minds have been around for thousands and thousands of years. It's one of the earliest uses of drama and music together. You know what makes them so fascinating, these two? Are they fascinating? It's their use of costume. It's very calculated. Calculated? How can a simple black and white body stocking be calculated? Oh, absolutely calculated. What does it signify? <laughs> the duality of our nature. The good and the evil. Well, those words are a little simplistic. It's more, more our bright side. You know, illumination of the spirit, good intentions, grand ideas, noble ambitions. As opposed to? As opposed to our desires, our less noble ambitions, satisfaction of the self first, perversions, well, large perversions. When does a perversion qualify as large? When it damages the spirit, someone else's or your own, when it gets out of control begins to possess you. You're a wealth of information. Ah, but there's more. Did you notice, for instance, that the girl's left side is white beneath the black makeup on her face, whereas the boy's left side is black beneath the white makeup on his face? <laughs> Let me guess. It means we all have a masculine and feminine side. Precisely. God's little trick. In literature, there are readers and there are writers. 
Today, I would like you to be the writers. First, you have to think of a story. Why don't you start? I don't have a story. Everyone has a story. I don't have a story. All right, well, I'll get you started on one and you can finish. A man drifting, floating down a river, lost. He can't free himself from this river because something or, or someone is on shore and stopping him getting ashore. What do you think it is that could be stopping him? Perhaps a memory? You're confused. What I'm telling you is an allegory. An allegory is when you use symbols to tell a story. People protect themselves with allegories. They have something that they have to get off their chest, something that is so painful, so nakedly embarrassing that they will use the symbols to hide behind. Like our dreams. Dreams are mostly allegories. Getting any ideas? No. All right. Let's say that the someone on shore is someone that the man who is drifting is very close to, a, a father, a sister, your mother. Hey, Professor, you still got me on your thumb like you did back there on that room? I don't think so. No, you just look scared, and you should, because you fucking pissed me off back there. You're gonna have to understand something. Nobody does that to me, ever. Nobody, nobody puts me under their control. Do you understand that? Do you fucking understand that? Come on now, Elaine. Tell me you haven't wanted to fuck me since the first day you saw me. Hmm? What buttons did I push, Dial? What are you so scared of? <laughs> Certainly not scared of you. Huh? No. And why don't you talk to me? About what? Hmm? I don't know. What is it you want to hear? I don't know. Why don't you tell me anything? Oh, do you want to hear about my father? Is that what you want to hear about? Huh? How he ground my mother down so much that she took a rat poison cocktail? Is that what you want to hear? Hmm? Do you want to hear about how the spineless bastard threw his arms around my neck? And just whimpered. How could she do that to me? Do you want to hear that? If you want to tell me.
Hi, sweetie, it's me. Oh, hi, Kate. How are you? Yeah, I'm fine. I was just wondering, what are you going to wear to the party on Saturday? I don't know. Well, I don't want to clash with Dean Patterson. <laughs> After all, it is your night. You know, I was thinking I might wear those, those wide chiffon pants of mine with that gold jacket. What do you think? Sounds fine. God, sweetie, you sound tired. Good night, Kate, and thanks for the champagne. Not at all. You're entirely welcome. Good night, sweetie. Step right out and follow the office. Well, how you doing, Sam? I got any damn brakes fixed. Hey, Billy, you put on some weight since I saw you last. I'm pregnant, baby. Next. Name, please. Candy Harrow. ID. Take off them glasses. Next. Name, please. Lisa Fisher. Excuse me, what's in that room? Cavity search. until one o'clock.
Hi, this is 847-2136. Please leave a message. Thank you. Elaine, I know you're there. Don't pick up. It's easier for me if, if you don't. I want to talk, but it's hard for me to do. I usually end up silent and angry. Today, you danced right to the edge for me. I liked it. I, I hate weakness. I have another conjugal visit next week. I had to rewire the warden's office to get it. Lane, I want you to dance again for me. I want you to take me to the edge. You and me. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome our new dean, Miss Elaine Patterson. <laughs> My dear Elaine, we are here to honor you and your well-deserved appointment as head of the literary department. I'm sure that you will bring nothing but high praise on yourself and on the university. Congratulations. Thank you, Dean. Thank you all. But no, you want to go back and see him again. You want him, bitch? Huh? Well, here's a taste. Can you take him fucking up, you pretty little face, huh? Can you take him fucking it up? Huh? Huh? Maybe you can. Maybe you're sick. Maybe you're sick like I am. A goddamn masochist, huh? And you fucking like it. Like he likes to see us bleed when he makes love to us. And he'll laugh while we scream in pain. Can you take that humiliation, huh? Can you really take that? Can you fucking take it, huh? Are you so fucked up? Like you can put up with that degradation as the hands of fucking madman, huh? No. You're too busy living in this ivory fucking tower. So out of touch, you probably think this excitement you're feeling it's real fucking emotion. You're playing with fire, honey. And I don't want to see you burn like me. See, he's a user. But I understand him. Joe and I, we're birds of a feather. We flock together. You crazy. The whole fucking world crazy. This ain't no fucking fairy tale. We're programmed like puppets. Welcome to the real fucking world, get, get out of my house! I'm gonna call the police! Oh! Oh! What a great fucking idea, babe! Let's go for it! Do it! Call him! And let's tell him that you want to fuck a convict, but his girlfriend won't let you. You fucking coward! Ah, 
And now, before all the little children go home, let's sum up our lesson of the day. Find your balls, honey. Don't fuck with the code of the streets. Hurt somebody before they hurt you. Class dismissed. You happy with it, Dal? You got to be. You're free from all the shit out there. You got no bills, no traffic hassles. You got a health plan. You get laid and no women to bust your balls. God damn it, man, you got it made. I envy you. I don't even know why I go home at night. Goddamn foreigners are buying up America faster than inflation's rising. General Motors closing factories from Texas to Michigan. Six million Americans are on the unemployment line. Warden, Chuck is here. Fuck it. Oh, I like your dial. Why, you're my favorite trustee. Why, I give you all the good jobs. Because you're one fine electrician. And a damn good listener. Are you listening, boy? You ready, one? That's right, sir. I'm losing it leaving this door open. Might give you some bad ideas. A smart cookie like you is back out in the street. I'm sorry, boy, but I couldn't live with my conscience knowing that I sent you straight back to hell. McBride will come and fetch you. Bye. That's right, Chuck. Seven minutes. Tick tock. Tick tock. And we will be one again. Five minutes. you say to her? The truth. The fucking truth, Joe, because I got nothing to lose. Where you going, huh? What the fuck do you do? Don't think? you touch me! I'll fucking kill you! Come on, kill me! Now lock you up so long, your dick will be a wrinkle, Joe! Come on! You're tired of it. You understand how I felt in your fucking arms! Come on, motherfucker, kill me, because I'd rather die! I'd rather die than live in this hell, because I'm tired. I'm tired of the torture you put me through. So go ahead, fucking blast me so they can fry you. And when they beat you down and they strip you of your dignity, you remember me, Joe? You're crazy, you know that? Joe, no, I love you, Joe. Please, Joe. Please. I love you. Joe, fuck me, please. I want to feel you again, Joe. I got so many pictures in my heart. Joe, no, 
I know I'm a dreamer, but my dreams are so beautiful. I just want to do anything for you. Please, Joe. <laughs> You're so pathetic. And you're fucking crazy, Joe. You're crazy. Yeah, I'm crazy. You're nothing! To think that she would love you like I love you. Can't you see, Joe? You are nothing to her? Just a weekend fuck? Hmm? A play toy? She loves me. No, she doesn't love you, Joe. No, Joe. I love you. And I'm gonna be somebody. Someday. I'm gonna be somebody. so sad you got a lion's temper and now i need a soft hand you say i'm a weak woman not without you put this roof over my head i'm a slave then a beggar to will forget that i'd rather live on the streets free to play i made out of marl but i'm a damn show sure live today joe you're a survivor street smokes with sharp eyes like fire bullets sank in your armor then you became harder yeah harder and harder when you came home you fought me now i'm just tired i was your woman then you became a liar well there's a man out there who's gonna treat me like a lady and not gonna curse me and beat me cause he's not happy he did my father system broke you down but you blame me and without the women you run around town now i'ma run two years into the arms of another lover that's real now how you like that joe and plus he knows how to love not like you with your bitter soul i want to tell you i'll find another man but you try to find me and kill me like your last girlfriend oh lord forgive me cause i cheated on my love but a sweet man is helping me recover i really wanted to be faithful forever but joe's not gonna find me and hurt me never You've been running from me for a long time And I'll show you, I'm guaranteed to find ya I'ma catch you slipping, and I'ma start tripping Cause it looks to me like you need a good ass whipping You cheated on me, and I'ma get you Put you six feet under just like the mother bitches And now I'm forced to go on a rampage and get my gap Yo, cause Joe don't play that This here's Professor Johnson. Looks like Dr. Patterson is not coming back. He's here to replace her. And I want you all to listen up and pay attention. Here, dial. The warden wants to see you now. Right now. Thought you had some brains in that skull of yours. Why? Why to me? I'm a peaceful man. <laughs> if only you'd have come to me, I would have advised you. Women are dangerous. Notes to women? You fuck them, Dial, period. <laughs> I got a phone call this morning. From some muckamuck asshole at City Hall, got another phone call from some asshole at the university. You know what they wanted? My ass. My fucking ass. And for what? For a bitch. 
a friend of this other cunt that I never wanted in my prison in the first place. Someone's going to pay for my suffering. Guess who, Mr. Dow? As of this moment, you lose all your privileges, you're no longer a trustee, and your movement is restricted to Zone A2. And your conjugal visits are history. Now get your ass out of here. Oh, wait a minute. I forgot. Cost me $89. And my wife lost the warranty. Now think of it as a favor, not for your warden, but for the wife of your warden. Fix it before I kill her. Hello, Buck? Yeah. Listen, as of now, Joe Dow is uh, no longer a trustee. It's classified to F7. Okay. <laughs> really? I told you so. You never want to listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> All right, okay. Friday, Sunday, whatever you want. You owe me one now. All right, then. Okay, I'll catch you. got a chance this year? Yeah, they do. But you don't. To paraphrase Dial, I danced close to the edge now with sanity nearly intact. I step back, never to venture toward that dark place again. Patterson, Detective Perlmutter's been looking for you. He says it's urgent. Thank you, Jessica. I think they're here. Dr. Patterson? Uh-huh. 
I'm Detective Perlmutter. Homicide. Detective Pierce. Well, um, what's what's wrong? I'd like to ask you a few questions. In regards to what? Dow. Joe Dow. Mr. Dial escaped, killed the warden and his driver. Oh, my God. I hope you forgive this intrusion, Dr. Patterson, but uh, before Mr. Dial escaped, he wrote something that uh, makes me tend to believe that you might be able to shed some light on this investigation. Now, we are one. What do you suppose he meant by that? I mean, you being his, uh, Literature teacher and all that. I thought maybe he might have some literary significance or something. I, I don't know. Uh -huh. Yeah. You know, he printed that on the warden's wall after he killed him. We are one. We are one. You know, Dr. Patterson, I may suggest I get a whole new security system for you. The boy's a psychopath, completely unpredictable, and a killer. And it's just a precaution. Hi, sweetie, it's me. Pick up. Detective. Lane. Are you there? That's private. Well, call me. Well, I'm sorry. Just force a habit. Listen, uh, just so happens, by the way, Dynamark Securities. Now, that's best in town. Talk to a boy named Spiros. That's my brother-in-law. You mention my name, he'll give you a discount. Now, if Joe Dial happens to call again, you get in touch with me. Dr. Patterson? This is McBride, your new warden speaker. Following are the new temporary prison regulations. All prisoners are ordered to abide by this. No inmates will be allowed out of their cells. Food will be brought in and consumed. No smoking, no television, no radio. No other electronic entertainment device will be allowed. All visitation privileges are suspended. Reading privileges are suspended. All trustee privileges are suspended. As of this moment, this here prison is functioning under state emergency regulations. Somewhere the baby is crying. Somewhere the day is dying. And a new day is born. Following us? Yep. 
So, you've come home to mama, baby. What could my little boy want? Just go to Jim's garage. Well, I don't know about that. Crazy! I'm not talking crazy, Joe. See, the cops hassled me about why you wrote, we are one. And I just really hope I told them the truth when I said it was about us. Because if you wrote it about that bitch, I'm gonna pull the fuck over and have it mess you up and throw you right back where you belong, asshole. So what do you say, baby? Come on, babe, you know how much I love you. I didn't mean what I said the other day. Joe, you didn't answer my question. Who are you one with? You, only you. No shit. Damn it, you know I can't live without you. I love you, Joe. You know, I'll do anything for you. How much money have you got? About a hundred bucks. Good, put it back here. Throw it back here so I can get it. When you get to the garage, drive into the service bay. And leave it there. Jim will know what to do. Tomorrow, come back and bring me some clothes, all right? You got it? Yeah. best, babe. You bet I am, Joe. Sweetie? I think so. Any news about Joe? Well, you tell us. He can go fuck himself. Oh. Is that it? No, baby. And you can go fuck yourself, too. You'd be eating the back of my head. All right. Remember. I'm sorry, I didn't realize it was personal. Young sweet thing, give me your ear, feel the rhythm, yeah, the rhythm of the love I got in here. Take my head in your hand, trap me, uh, yeah, in quicksand, eat me, my big brown bear. God, I missed you, babe. You know, I've been thinking all night. And I thought it all worked out. We gotta get the hell out of here. I'm gonna take care of you. It's gonna be okay. You don't have to worry anymore. I brought you your clothes, your pretty blue shirt. I got you for your birthday. Your favorite jeans, you know, the ones, babe, with the hole in your butt. I got them. And your snakeskin boots. Also, Jordan gave me an address where we'll be safe. We're in this together, babe, all the way, just you and me. And we're gonna be free. We're young, Joe, we're young. We're gonna get the hell out of here. We're gonna make something of ourselves. Ah, oh, dreams. So many dreams. 
We're gonna do it, Joe. We're gonna do it. Turn out the car. Keep your hands in the air. Open up that trunk, Andy. Open up the trunk. Open up the fucking trunk. Harassing me. Do I look like Rodney King, asshole? Huh? Yeah, you look huh? more like Whoopi. I'm gonna sue your fucking ass. Before we have to throw your big butt in the can. For what? Impersonating a nigger and doing a bad job of huh? it. Just what we need in another white prick on the police force. Make you happy to be the first white prick you've seen in years. Again, Joe. This here's a 38 special. Fire six shots, it's double action. I'll take it. Body. You can't get rid of me anymore, Elaine. Donald, please. Just go, I promise you. I won't tell anyone that you were here. Just go. I won't tell you, please. I won't tell anyone you were here. I promise. Is that what you want, Elaine? Is that what you really want? All right, I'll go. But tell me that first time you came to see me, you wanted me. You wanted me bad, didn't you? You still want me. Tell me you love me. No. No. I can't. You will.
me, please. We are one. Now, now I understand. You see you, Dr. Patterson, you're the type of individual that's attracted to and likes flirting with danger. There's no moral judgment there, of course. But your personal life is your personal life, but I think if you'd have told me the truth about we are one, I think we, the police, might have been able to do something about it. But be that as it may, it's never too late. Inspector Pearl might have shown we get to the point here. Obviously, Professor Patterson is in very grave danger. Now, if I may suggest, you surround her house with police that can be seen in order to deter this man from coming there again. Uh-huh. <laughs> well, Professor Evans, Dr. Patterson's house is under close surveillance by the police. And we will have a policewoman pretending to be Dr. Patterson. Uh, and if I might suggest, I think it'd be a good idea if uh, Miss Patterson stayed here for a night or maybe a few nights under your protected roof. As, uh, being the uh, psychopath that Mr. Dial is, I'm certain that he will return to the object of his obsession. But as you well know... Postman. Know, Postman always rings twice. <laughs> <laughs> Damn, what the hell does that mean? Come on, mailman. Professor Evans. Come on, Sherlock. Uh, Bill. Matter of you. here for you. Uh, I don't want to ask you any questions. Uh, well, that's really all I've got to say. James, you are a very, very nice man. My only regret is that I didn't take you up on your invitation for express <laughs> Kitty, 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 kitty
Look who's here. The big lover himself. What happened, babe? She sent you to hell? Found herself a bigger stud? Yeah, you were right. She fucked me. But you know what? Now we're gonna fuck her. Come on. I need you to fucking help me on this. I gotta find her. I'm doing this for us. I mean, you know I love you, baby. Dr. Patterson's office, may I help you? Uh, hi, this is uh, Sharon from, uh... <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Wexler and Hill, uh, uh, Dr. Patterson's publishers. It's urgent that Mr. Hill speak to Dr. Patterson immediately. I'm sorry, she's not in. Could you please tell us where she can be reached? I'm sorry, I can't. I understand, uh, but it's really, really urgent that we talk to her. I'm really sorry, Sharon. Um, I could set up a conference call. Would that be convenient for you? Yeah, that's great. Fantastic. I'm going to put you on hold for one moment. Don't go away. Sharon, are you still there? Yeah, holding. OK, it's ringing now. Professor James Evans, you know the routine. Leave me a message after the beep. Thank you. I'm sorry, that's the best I could do. You're a sweetie pie. We're just gonna try back later. Ciao. Where are you going, Joe?
wanted, you fucking cunt! I'm suffocating! I'm suffocating! I can't communicate myself to anybody! Nobody can fucking understands me! Oh, I killed myself for you! I died for you and you didn't give a fuck! You didn't give a fuck, did you? Why'd you leave me, Bobby? You betrayed me, you weren't there when I came back! How could you leave me with him? Don't you ever touch my mother! Don't hurt my mother! I'll kill you! I'll kill you! Let's have some fun, huh? Let's have some fun. Sit. I said sit there! Now! We're gonna play a little show and tell now. Okay? Take off your panties. Not your skirt! Take off your panties! Take off your bra. I can hear your heartbeat. Are you getting aroused? Look at me. Look at me! They say, come to Mama Joy. Say it. Come to Mama Joy. Say it. when I do it, but I know what's good for you.
programmed like puppets to suffer and fail. No. It's only when the devil tempts us we burn. And from that pain, there's a lesson to be learned. No matter how many tears fall, we just gotta wait for tomorrow when a new dream is born. See, I'm a lover, a liar, a dreamer, and a queen. I want it all, licking my lips and whipping my cream. Waiting, anticipating a man who loves a child in me. Yo, what's wrong being a sex queen? Living on the edge is what excites me. Yeah, I'm a crazy bitch, a Czechoslovakian kamikaze. The thrill of playing with fire, I love it. So come on, get rid of that condition and all that bullshit. Nobody has the right to judge or label me crazy. Cause I was born to run from the rules of society. Speaking the truth, I know it gets me in trouble. But I just gotta bust somebody's butt. So what if my mom is foul? I say it how I see it. I'm not a calculator, manipulator like you. Hypocrites, you're looking at a real crazy woman, and nothing's gonna stop me from getting what I want. Good morning, Corporate Christie, and how y'all doing today, friends and neighbors? This here is Travis Charlie from Skywatch Wood, and I hope you're all surviving this hot and muggy weather. That's 8% humidity again today, and traffic is almost back to normal. Break me up some more of that candy. It's just a nasty situation. It's sweet, ain't it? Give me that nasty yeah. situation. 